Stay tuned, it's Charlie V. I just want to say, Thomas, you're 53 today. Happy birthday, sir. Yeah, lad. Enjoy. Thanks oh, very I'm, much. I'm, Charlie. I'm. Thanks, sir. Keep See you later, love man. It, kid. Love it. Thank you. Love See it. you, mate. Rum, rum. Thank you, Jimin. Please carry on. You're very talented. Okay. I am. Yes, I've never met it before. That's the music from my dreams. Would you believe it? Yeah, that is my dreams. Well, honestly, no lies. I've never met this before, honestly. This sounds like Requiem for Charlotte in B yes. major. Thank you. Yeah. Sir. Thank oh, you, sir. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you. Carry on. Beautiful. Nice. Good morning. It's a scene outside Manchester Crown Court, just off spinning fields. I had to start filming. Behind me is a gaggle of wags, wives and girlfriends having a cackly, whiny, impotent screechy conversation about whether their boyfriend's gonna go to trial, what the barrister thinks, whether Johnny's guilty in it. Yeah, he didn't do it, he didn't do it. And it's just, there they are. It's just funny walking past and just having a feeling that normies are forever trapped in a prison of their own ignorance. Shout out for construction man Joe. Joe in spinning fields. I walk past and he's like, stop filming me. I was like, excuse me? He's like, stop filming me. I said, like, what? S start filming you. And he goes, no, you're that guy that's always filming people and stop. And I was like getting ready to like, you know, square up. And then he goes, ah, and I was like, ah, and he was like, ah. Is the genetic code, as in your GATC combination, is that your mathematical structure, which mostly dictates, I'm not saying everyone's a, you know, predetermined and pre, pre, uh, destinied, but what if it, uh, your mathematical formulation, hey, Tom, you okay? Yeah. What if your mathematical formulation pretty much dictates the general train tracks that you're going to travel down. DNA is destiny, isn't it? I must be seeing double. Yeah. Are you guys twins? Yeah. Uh, good. Charlie Veach channel. I'm here with the two alpha chads. Look at that. We were just talking about genetics. Sir, how does it feel? Is it okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? Yeah. How does it feel to know that there's a man that shares your genetics 100% so you're not even unique? How does that make you feel? Uh, well, technically we might be unique. Music, no, but, math but mathematically though, you're identical. Oh no, through yeah, mutations. Yeah. Tell me quickly about that for my ignorant self and for my ignorant audience. How can two identical twins be unique? Um, because obviously it's, you know, through sunlight and things like that might mutate your DNA. And sunlight? Alcohol. You, you can't have like sunlight. That. Look at you. You can't yeah, have sunlight. too some. pasty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Name's Charlie Veach. What's your names, guys? Alex and Will. Alex and Will, thank you guys. Charlie Veach, you'll be on the show tonight. Okay. Thanks well, guys. YouTube. This YouTuber, yeah, yeah. Thanks guys, all the best. How unfathomably cool is this guy? It's like Socrates put on a business suit. Socrates is here to get you out of Plato's cave. Or the other way around. <laughs> or is it more <laughs> is it more Pythagoras? Behind me is a perfect example of what I call the utterly selfish smoker. It's when they smoke 10 centimeters from the front entrance and all the cigarette smoke goes into the building. I smoke. It's not, this isn't a moral thing about smokers, but if you're gonna smoke, smoke like a grown-up. look at that, <laughs> No, it's okay, it's okay, it doesn't matter. It's fine, it is fine. So, some money being delivered or picked up by G4S, the, um, the semi-governmental, non-governmental agency. Who are you talking to me? Uh, uh, okay. I was just filming the. Do you know who I am? Okay. Okay, sir. 
<laughs> was that last guy Irish? Was that a Republic of Ireland accent? I think so. Trying to say before Irish uh, man uh, gave me some lovely content with the abuse. Um, in Brazil, or I think in uh, many third world countries, money deliveries to a bank. There's a lot of armed police in two different trucks nearby because they love a bank robbery, the Brazilians. I'm allowed to say this, I'm Brazilian. There's, I think, between three and five major retail bank robberies, you know, classic cars, getaway driver, balaclavas, machine guns, big, big bags of cash. There's between three and five of those each day in Rio de Janeiro alone. Now that's true thug life. Do I approve of it? Of course not, they should all be shot dead. In order to celebrate the Platinum Jubilee, here's a nice sculpture of uh, Prince Charles riding his wife. Well, 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 they look a little bit brighter on the proper lens. The advice is just be. Well, I disagree. If you're dating, if you're trying to figure out who and what you are and you want to uh, breed, maybe be the best version of yourself you can be. Don't just be yourself because most people are actually amoral shits and it won't get you anywhere. So, the urban myth around Fanta. Look how many flavors there are. <laughs> the urban myth around Fanta. I don't know if it's true, but I heard it again recently that Fanta was developed by the National Socialists in Germany in the late 30s and early 40s. Because of a trade embargo, they weren't able to get Coca-Cola. So the Nazis invented Fanta. Is that true? Is Fanta the people's drink? Who's he talking to? He's talking to everyone. To everyone. Look at that, the new Toyota Camry. Not seen one of those since the 90s. Toyota Camry. Woo. My policeman friends added me to a, a special WhatsApp group uh, full of cops and security, uh, CCTV operators, all for central Manchester. And by Jove, oh my God, I thought I was you know, putting my finger on the pulse of the degeneracy of the city center, but every 10 minutes, there's new images of people robbing, stealing, stabbing, drinking, vomiting. And the one that breaks my heart the most, that, hello, hello, how are you? I don't have any money, sorry. I thought you were being nice, I didn't know you were begging. Anyway, um, <laughs> so the one that breaks my heart the most, this guy here is a former, he's appeared on my channel, but he's a former big ass gangster. People used to fear him, but now he's lost his mind. Jesus, lost my train of thought. Let me review the footage, see where I was. Get back. The footage that breaks my heart the most is seeing these disgusting degenerate crackheads trick the staff into ordering a coffee or something, and then they grab the tip jar and 50 quid of tips gone, 70 quid of tips gone. Every day I'm seeing new footage of these tip jar thieves. And that's not robbing from a corporation. That's not some abstract crime where no one suffers. This is stealing from retail restaurant staff. God, I hate you so much. The crackheads, not the retail staff, the crackheads. What's going on here? Let's see. A very Slavic looking individual being kicked out. Too funny, he's got ACAB on his backpack. ACAB, that is an acronym for all cops are bastards. Yeah, get out! <laughs> so it's not an airport, Airport. it's a train station. Still transporty, still a lot of eager faces. People in the purgatory of neither here nor there. They're in transit. In transito. So images from Manchester Airport is uh, literally tens of thousands of families getting BTFO'd back the fuck off, I'm getting told by police, because of course police get involved, when you've got a bunch of uh, normies having spent seven grand to go to Gran Canaria, staying in some exclusive resort overlooking uh, a building site with a, a slightly, you know, algae ridden swimming pool. When they've paid their seven grand, when they get to the airport, when they've paid for airport car parking, 150 quid for a week, and you still have to get a shuttle bus, when they've done all that, they get to the gate, the boarding gate, and then some disinterested asshole staff member from Thomas Cook or Tui or Hayes, Tra whoever, whoever says, sorry guys, thank you for the 7,000 pounds, but fuck your holiday, fuck you, 
fuck your children's uh, comfort and ability to sleep, go home. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your modern... Is, they're staring at me, aren't they? They're staring at me. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your modern British travel experience. Excuse me, guys, just for my vlog. Are you wearing blue or green? Green. Green? Yeah. My colorblind viewers would disagree with that. Thank you. Cheers. In the airport, but they've got one of these little golf buggies. Look at that. I want to go. Anyone who knows Manchester, um, this Pat Piccadilly will know that platform 13 and 14 are very far away. Is he going to do it? 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 No, he's not going to do it. Anyway, where is it? Where is the bustling camera? There he is. There's your bustling camera. Smashy, smashy, smash, smash. Spray the water. Nobody likes dust. Dust, anyone? A bit of dust? No dust? Anyone? Dust? No dust? Dust free? Dust free? Where's the dust? No dust. Oh, I like that. So that's actually a snow machine from the French Alps. It is, it's a snow machine. I'm not even... Yeah, you're all right. Thank you. It says the person responsible for my safety today is who? Is it, is it you? Are you responsible for my safety? It's me. It's me. So the... Me. Just uh, checking, see if I've got any lettuce in my teeth in the Porsche discs. Yeah. And they looking good. <laughs> so the entrance to St. George's house looks like something out of Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Side of the Midland Hotel, this shot on the main sensor on the S20 Ultra is just to give you a 100 year old building made of tiles, shiny tiles with the sun shining off the side of it. It's just suitably cinematic for viewers of the Charlie Beach experience. Right, well, it is 3.20, just in time for witching hour outside McDonald's, the most violent McDonald's branch in the Western world. There he is! He's a crazy person. He's a crazy person. Here, don't get too close, Charlie. Don't ever put your hands on me again. Always the victim. He doesn't like being filmed, does he? Don't get too close, Charlie. Don't ever put your hands on me again. Don't ever put your hands on me again. No wonder Danny left you. Attention seeking whore, that's what you are. No, don't ever put your hands on me again. I'm not gonna warn you again. Now, no wonder Danny, do not put your hands out to me. Yeah, fuck you, fuck you. No wonder Danny left you. Don't put your hands on me. No wonder Danny left you. You're attention seeking whore, that's what you are. Always the victim, always the victim. There he is, look. Always the victim, Charlie Beach. Cries to the police every time. Strange how you edit your videos, isn't it? So you're always the victim. Strange how you loved his videos. Always the victim. Strange how he loved your videos. Always the victim, Charlie Dees. Where are they? Where are the 16 year old kids that you hang around with today? Yeah, let him talk. Let him talk. Mark, Mark, can I ask you a question? Always the victim. Why are you obsessed with me? Why are you obsessed with me? Always the victim. I'm going to the gym now. Don't ever put your hands on me again, Charlie. Don't ever put your hands on me again, Charlie. See you soon, mate. See you soon. Why are you putting your hands on me? See you, mate. Why are you putting your hands on me? Because I can. Because you can? Yeah. You go around wearing a thing saying, I am the law, you're not the law, you're a fucking knobhead. Please don't get too what close to me. What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Fuck you. Come on then, big guy. Come on then, big guy. Yeah, yeah. What, what the fuck are you doing? Fucking knobhead. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of yours. away, Mark B. You're going to get fucked up, dude. You're gonna get fucked up, dude. No, no, no. I'm calling the police. I've got it on do it, do it, do it. Good. Yeah, I will do. Do it. Good luck, mate. Alone. What the fuck are you doing? Leave me alone. Leave me alone, dude. What the fuck are you doing? See you, mate. Take care. See you. Take care. You're lucky. I've got a bad hand, dude. You're lucky. Mark, you gotta be. Leave people alone, dude. You gotta leave people alone. Goodbye. Yeah, my God, you got your munchkin to support. So I've just been attacked by Mark B. Television. He's been antagonizing me a few times in person, pushing me, and he, he went too far. 
He grabbed my arm. I was worried he was going to sucker punch me. I've got a broken finger. He went too far, dude. We had to act reasonably and make him back off. Is someone behind me? Is there someone behind me? There is. <laughs> Guys, this is the MEN TikTok pervert. He's the guy that films girls. Mark, come near me again. You'll get the same treatment again. You will, you will get the same treatment. Stay out of it, munchkin man. Fuck you, munchkin man. Stay out of it, Mark. Yeah. No, I've self-defended against you. you. Right? I saw two guys on one guy. Right. 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 He's been threatening us for these right? weeks, right? So tell him to stop following us. Please tell him to know our name. Bye, Mark. Bye. Hey, man. Mark, you're a pervert, you're an incel, and you should be ashamed of yourself. You, attacking a man with a broken hand, you're lucky you got off as lightly as you did. That is homophobic, and you're on the phone to the police. Oh, my God. I am the law. Mark, go have sex with a woman. Go have sex with a woman. Mark, you incel. You dirty incel. Go have sex with a woman. That feeling when you have to act in self-defense against the crazy guy stalking you. Mark, listen. You come within two meters, I'll do self-defense again, just so you know. God save the gracious queen. Happy platinum jubilee. At least it's not a plutonium jubilee. Anyway, what was I going to say? So I read a theory this morning on the internet, on the forums, the free speech forums, where people speak and write the most crazy things without fear of uh, being arrested. Are my glasses wonky? Anyway, it said that uh, for many of them, not all of them, not all transgender individuals, but for many of them, what happens is it's uh, obsession with the female so strongly from an incel an incel being an involuntary celibate person. Hello, sir, how are you? And uh, what happens is in their obsession, in their desire, that, and it's an intense, almost cosmic desire, a Lovecraftian need to have a woman, to be with a woman, to have sex with a woman. And eventually that desire, that need goes so strong that they become the woman. And then they auto cuckold themselves. They become a mega cuck because then they have sex with men and when they receive it, when they lift their legs up and receive it, they're actually relating to the man that's having sex with them more than the woman that they say that they are. And then their victory is complete. They became the woman. The woman can never escape. They control her now. And each time they perform. I think I'll, I'll stop talking while I'm ahead. God save the queen. These young men suffered and lost their eyesight and their limbs and died so that we could have overcrowded classrooms where children struggle to learn. This guy here, being led by the blind, the blind leading the blind, his sacrifice, the greatest generation, was so that young ladies could not feel safe walking through the streets late at night after a nightclub or whatever. It's just too savage out there. This poor guy here with a head injury, with concussion and serious head trauma, he's got a bit of gangrene on his uh, wound because he's been in the Somme for too long without adequate healthcare and without adequate, you know, sanitizing equipment. He is so proud that he gave his eyesight and 20% of his brain so that we could literally, you know, have no working hospitals, no working airports, nothing can run on time, overpriced trains, overpriced energy. Sorry for tapping you on the head, sir. Shoulder, there you go. Overpriced trains, overpriced energy. No one can afford to live. And uh, shoplifting and robbing from anyone is like almost accepted. Something's got to give. I don't want to get serious. Something's got to give. You don't just sacrifice an entire generation of young men to let your country turn to shit. The far still at the end there is Wonderwind. Wonderwind, yeah. Uh, and then the, ne the next one along is the condenser for that. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. And then this new still here, this bright shiny one, is our new whiskey still. Look at that. Brass, is it? That's big brass. Copper. Copper are more expensive than brass. Yeah, so and the, 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 the thousand litre wonder when yeah um, and then we've got a thousand litre this is what the guy's installing at the moment it's a thousand litre whiskey still and you know it's good sir to see you fighting the cost of living crisis by making your own whiskey and gin good on you uh, we make we make whiskey we make gin we make vodka we make rum we make absinthe absinthe oh um, little green um, devil drink um, good man we make vermouth vermouth and tell me again, because I wasn't filming at the time, what are these little Aladdin genies lamps on the table so here? So, the, 
that they're small stills people can come to the gin school and make their own bottle of gin wow you make your own bottle of gin with their own flavor and everything so over here we have all the botanicals you, you can pick with it, in it whatever you want so Ooh, look at that he does have all the botanicals on the side yeah so you've got like nutmeg and Cannabis, cocaine, <laughs> heroin, oh, yeah, opium, like LSD, that. mescaline. It, it, that was a it, mescaline gin. It, it, it's funny because the number of people that we have that want to make a, uh, a spicy gin. Spicy so, gin. So we have... Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll think of the words in a minute. But we have all sorts of spices. Um, the trick is not to put too much in. Yeah. So people think that, oh, Less you know, we more. need to put... Well, no. That will make uh, a, a bottle of gin's worth of thing in about 20 minutes. Really? So, so you don't to need actually, too much. To yeah. actually distill it, we, we put 97% proof alcohol, water, it's basically vodka. Yeah. And then all the botanicals. And we have a set sort of base recipe. We know what works. Yeah. Uh, and the guys that run run the gin school talk to the people, yeah. and then you can put whatever flavourings you want: lemon, lime, wow. raspberry, coriander, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I say it takes about twenty minutes, half an hour, to actually distill all your your uh, alcohol out, yeah. and then you dilute that to forty percent, and you end up with a bottle. You get another bottle like this. <coughs> Obviously, obviously the brands all turn the other way for the customers. It's quite right, quite right. Well, sir, thank you so much. Sure. Just your first name. What's your first name? Martin. Martin from Manchester Gin. Manchester Gin. And yeah. what's three little words? What is three, three little words? Three little words is the bar and restaurant. So we've got a cocktail bar and restaurant. As you walk up, you yeah. see bar, restaurant, and it's all tied in with uh, Manchester Gin, drinks of Manchester. Amazing. I'm going to turn the camera off. Thank you very much. That's Manchester Gin for you. Hope you enjoyed that. You don't see that every day.